As a film series built on franchises, the Marvel Cinematic Universe's weak link has always been the Thor movies. Thor from 2011 was not the most amazing movie, but it was a passable one with great moments and a stellar performance by Tom Hiddleston. After that, we got Thor The Dark World in 2013, which was not as good. The police were called to the scene shortly after 11 a.m. this morning after a seemingly harmless rambler. It's one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's weakest films, having a predictable plot and uninteresting villain. It's saved by solid acting by the cast, except for probably Natalie Portman. But yeah, it has great visual effects and a decently structured story, but I don't think anyone's ever been asked, who's your favorite Avenger, and said Thor. I've actually never heard that. It's really strange to hear. And uh, if you if you did like Thor before uh, Thor Ragnarok, there's nothing wrong with that. You do you. But still, it doesn't change the fact that Thor has been a subpar character in a massive universe, and at the risk of being forgotten, there had to be some type of change. Now, with the arrival of Taika Waititi and his tonal inversion, the game had changed. Thor Ragnarok propelled Thor into the spotlight and actually made audiences want another Thor movie. Ragnarok pulled an almost soft reboot of the character, making him more likable, relatable, and selfless. And I believe Taika Waititi's greatest accomplishment is not necessarily drastically changing Thor, though he did make him funnier to make him more relatable. Here's the thing. Waititi is a specialist in the weird. And by weird, I mean this. The world is not a perfect place where everyone gets along and there's no strange things you see or experience, and also, Where's the fun in that? Taika Waititi's directorial style embraces the weird. Better yet, life is very weird. Events happen that just can't be explained and processed, and usually it's so strange and awkward, you laugh at it. Waititi's vision embraces humor and ramps up the strangeness so much that we start to feel like we are inhabiting an actual space with genuine reactions from characters, as comedic as they can be. There are always two doors to choose from. And through the first door, oh, it's easy to get through that door and on the other side, waiting for you are all the nummiest treats you can imagine. Fanta, Doritos, LMP. But you know what? There's also another door. Not the burger ring door, not the Fanta door. Another door that's harder to get through. Guess what's on the other side? Vegetables? N no. Also talking about life being weird, Korg himself is the physical embodiment of this. Thor is transported to a strange new planet, and Korg basically symbolizes this new weird environment. Even better, Korg is a very strange looking rock creature, but is a nice, humble character, which feels out of place, but reminds you that this is a real world and not a fantasy, where every character is a badass and knows exactly what to say. I think that even Marvel in general does this very well to some extent, it never feels like a grandiose, over-the-top pretentious film. It focuses on character, and what Waititi specializes at is also character. Now life can also be very random, and Waititi has a genuine fascination for real life and its unexpectedness. It's a well-known fact that the movie was improvised heavily, but what some don't realize is that that's a way to portray the randomness of life itself in a film. For an actor to deter from the script and say different lines that to him would make more sense or would be funny adds dimension because the actor actually inhabits the character. It's almost like when you talk to a friend and you start randomly commenting on things you see. It may feel out of place, but it's a genuine way of making dialogue feel real. And that plays to Waititi's strength, which is the randomness of it all. An organized mess. I'm, uh, you, I know how you different. work, and you tend to just let things play out in front of your very eyes. Oh, look, there's a, just as in life, there's always a better version around the corner, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, it's like life is an improvised uh, scene, you know? And so you can't wake up and just read the script. No way. How boring <laughs> would life be if it was like all that. written out for you? So again, Randomness feels honest, because things in life don't work out perfectly, and there's scenes which can feel out of place and random, but it's how the characters react to this event that makes the movie that much more relatable, because in the end, it's all about making Thor a relatable hero. And how do you make a god relatable? By giving him humility, and whenever he is put in insane situations, he acts accordingly. The movie also doesn't shy away from darker material, and to surpass the previous movies, Thor Ragnarok had to elevate its plot. 
Everything has repercussions, and at times events feel like random coincidences which spiral out of control due to past events. Captain America Civil War exists due to the damage that the Avengers caused in the previous films, and it culminates in a showdown which leaves Captain America and Iron Man going down different paths. The destruction that the Avengers cause in the 2012 film The Avengers also gives rise to the Vulture, and this would have never happened if Tony Stark didn't decide to clean up after the messes that he and the Avengers caused. Now Thor Ragnarok takes this cause and effect even further. Hela is the embodiment of the past coming back to haunt you, and Odin's past is shrouded with mystery and is finally revealed in the movie. Like the world we live in, he got his power not through peace and love, but through violence and greed. And somewhere along the line, he decided to cease his terrible ways and become a more benevolent ruler, casting out his own daughter and slowly hiding the truth from everyone. But the past can't be hidden, and that's one thing Waititi played off of, cause and effect. The world is made up of random events that have shaped it to where it is now, and Thor's entire journey is thanks to the effect part of his father's cause. The movie also doesn't entirely negate emotional moments like one would believe from watching trailers. The movie is full of moments that add weight and depth to every single character. Each character has a standout scene which reveals their place in the story. Loki, I thought the world of you. I thought we were gonna fight side by side forever, but at the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. I know maybe there's still good in you, but let's be honest, our paths diverged a long time ago. He needs to get help. What? Help me! Oh, classic. And it's fantastic to watch, whether it be for comedic purposes or not. And YTD, again, as a fan of the random and unexpected, doesn't necessarily have emotional scenes climax with a cry fest, but makes the climax a joke. And while that may sound bad, it actually has a powerful effect. Laughter on its own is powerful, and it stems from genuine joy, and that's a powerful emotion. And whenever something makes us react strongly, we remember it. And Waititi uses this to connect plot points from beginning, middle, and end. Strong character moments don't necessarily have to be sad ones or courageous ones. We can actually learn a lot of the character from a good five minutes of just seeing his or her life. Stop! Stop! I'm not paying for those. You're fired. My class is over. See me standing here. For God's sake, it's not much, now take it. <sighs> Sorry he doesn't pay the rent. Especially after Thor and Thor of the Dark World, Ragnarok does what the other movies missed, and that's giving life to other worlds. While Thor from 2011 did this a bit better with the Frost Giants, you never got to see what an actual daily life was like in Jotunheim, making the Frost Giants feel more like plot points than actual characters in a story. The Dark World did this even worse, with Malekith being a walking plot point, and the Vanaheim battle, while no doubt entertaining, did nothing to make the world an actual inhabitable place. Even in the other films, Asgard itself wasn't a living space, it felt like a place used for expository dialogue more than anything. And while we do have scenes of relaxation and character development, it never felt like a place where people actually live. One of my favorite scenes from Thor The Dark World is surprisingly a quiet scene in which Heimdall and Thor talk about the situation with the Dark Elves, and why I love it so much is because it feels like an actual conversation that two people would have. We see Thor in a dark place, and we see Heimdall finally away from guarding the space bridge, and it feels like a moment of quiet in the middle of loud action and special effects. The Bifrost is closed by your father's orders. No one is to come or to go. We face an enemy that is invisible even to me. What use is a guardian such as that? And Ragnarok takes making Asgard a living place even further, having the main plot of the movie being rescuing the people of Asgard from Hela. We get to see the outside of just the kingdom of Asgard and explain the nature that surrounds it. Even though it's all going to hell, quite literally, we get to see more of the people that make Asgard feel like home to Thor. Fans always clamored for Thor to go to different worlds and not just Earth, but these worlds never felt alive and real with characters in them, like in The Lord of the Rings or the Harry Potter franchise, which deeply connects the world to the characters that inhabit them. Thor Ragnarok, on the other hand, gives us an entire act to learn about Sakaar, with each beat in the plot taking us from place to place. 
and we get to learn about the Grandmaster and his festivities and the people and how different characters have different points of view on the world that they inhabit. That's how you create a world, not with just imagery and special effects. Now remember, visual effects come second to the story and must only benefit the story and add to it, but not overtake it. A story cannot revolve around CGI action, it's the other way around, and Waititi knows this. It's about character, and his part to play in the story. Waititi once stated, I wanted people to be more on the side of Thor, make Thor the most interesting character in the film. There's no point calling the movie Thor if he's not the coolest thing in it. <laughs>